Hello and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Hot Standby Router Protocol and Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. One problem that network administrators must deal with is how to handle the issue of network components malfunctioning. For example, if a switch or a router was to stop working, the network should not crash because of one component. Most large or medium-sized companies put redundancy in their network design to make it more resilient to failure. Here we see that the router has gone down and is unable to forward packets to the internet. This is a single point of failure. The internet service for everyone in the computer depends upon this one router working correctly. The hot standby routing protocol is Cisco's standard method of providing high network availability by providing first hop redundancy for network hosts configured with a default gateway. The hot standby router protocol routes IP traffic without relying upon the availability of any single router. It enables a set of router interfaces to work together to prevent the appearance of a single virtual router or default gateway to the host on the LAN. When hot standby routing protocol is configured on the network or segment, it provides a virtual MAC address and a virtual IP address that is shared among a group of configured routers. We now have two routers, router A and router B. Router A is actively routing traffic to the internet and has a virtual IP address of 10.0.0.1, which is the default gateway. Router B is the backup or standby router, just in case the active router goes down. Notice that the active router gets all of the packets that are sent to the default gateway. This is because it is playing the role of the virtual gateway router. The active router has cloned both the MAC address and the IP address of the virtual router. But suppose the active router malfunctions and can no longer forward packets. Router A will stop sending out hello packets. The role of the virtual router then goes to the backup router B. It now advertises the virtual IP address and the virtual MAC address. Now when the network clients need to send packets to the internet, they use router B as the default gateway. This is a list of the hot standby router protocol states. The initial state does nothing. The listen state listens for hello messages. The speak state sends hello messages and they are also the next candidates to be the standby router. The standby state is the next in line to become the active router. And the active state will actually forward packets. The standby IP command activates the hot standby router protocol feature and creates the virtual IP address. The standby priority command sets the priority level for the group. The standby preempt command allows the router to become the active router again after it has lost that status. The standby authentication command allows the packets to be sent to other routers in an encrypted form. The standby track command monitor interfaces 
and it will decrement the value of the priority if the monitor interface goes down. The show standby command shows the configuration of the hot standby router protocol. The VRRP IP command activates the VRRP feature and assigns the virtual router and IP address. The VRRP priority command sets the priority level. The VRRP preempt command allows a physical router to regain control of the active status even after it has lost the status. The VRRP authentication command allows VRRP to communicate with other VRRP speaking routers in a encrypted fashion. The VRRP track command allows VRRP to decrement the priority value if an interface goes down. In order to select what interfaces will be tracked, you will need the track interface command at the global configuration level. The show VRRP command gives the status and configuration of the VRRP feature. We are looking at the terminal window of router A. Let's take a look at the running configuration. We can see that the hot standby router protocol has been configured on here. It has the virtual IP address, a priority of 105, set for preempt, has encryption, and it tracks the interface going from router A to the internet router. As I noted earlier, we can see that the priority is 105. Now let's take a look at the running configuration of router B. The hot standby router protocol is also configured on this router. They have the IP address. It's configured to preempt. It has encryption. And it's also set to decrement the interface going from router B to the internet router if it goes down. Now let's go to the terminal window of the computer. Let's ping the IP address 1.1.1.1 which is on the internet router. The pings are successful. Now let's run the trace route to see what path the packets take to go to network 1.1.1.1. We can see that the default gateway is router A, which has an IP address of 10.0.0.2 and an address going from router A to the internet router with an IP address of 10.12.0.1. Now I'm about to disconnect the link going from router A to the internet router. We can see that router B has taken over. It has an IP address of 10.0.0.3 and an IP address going from router B to the internet router of 10.13.0.1. Okay, now let me reconnect the interface going from router A to the internet router. We see that there's a moment when both routers are actually trying to forward the IP packets. But this is quickly resolved and router A quickly becomes the only one routing the packet for the default gateway.
we have configured router A and router B with virtual router redundancy protocol. Let's take a look at the running configuration of router A. Note that we configured this on the interface. Just like the hot standby router protocol, this also has similar commands with an IP address, priority, authentication, and the ability to track the interface. We can see similar traits on router B. It has been configured on the interface and we only see two VRRP commands here. This is because I did not bother to put tracking on router B and I didn't set it to preempt and they have the default value of 100 for the priority. Now let's take a look at the terminal window for the computer. It also is able to ping the internet router. And we can see that it is using router A to forward packets through. Now let me disable the link going from router A to the internet router. Now when we run a trace route to the internet router, it uses router B. Now I will reconnect the link from router A to the internet router. Eventually router A takes back control of the virtual router and becomes the default virtual gateway. In this video, we saw how we could improve the performance and resiliency of a network using the failover and recovery of hot standby routing protocol and virtual router redundancy protocol. I hope this video was informative and I thank you for viewing.